As Cyberpunk just came out, as we all know, as well as having a bunch of new games coming for 2021 that are looking super awesome, I've been getting asked more than ever, Adam, should I get into the video game industry? And if I do, what should I know? This video is for you. Five second backstory on me. I went to school for one year at Vancouver Film School and graduated with a game design diploma. That one year cost me $35,000, but I did graduate. Two weeks after that, I got a job for $42,000 a year salary. And if you've watched my videos before, you may know that my nine to five job currently is as a game developer. The games industry pretty much grows every year, so I'm not surprised that I got a bunch of messages this year about getting into the industry. But keep in mind, working in video games is not all fun and games like technically it is but you know but you know what i mean and this is the only video i have so far on my channel about the game industry so if you do want to see more or you enjoy this content leave it a like and tell me in the comments below because if the video does well i'll be sure to do more of it and of course if you have any questions after this video you can follow and dm me on instagram at the adam j bell Okay, so we gotta start off with the most controversial topic when it comes to games, as well as the biggest thing that probably scares people away when they consider the industry. And that thing is overtime. And I just thought that overtime would be like any other job. You know, you work overtime and you get paid time and a half. At least in Canada, that's mainly how it works. I still remember being in class and our teachers told us, you will work overtime when you get into the industry for free. Some of you may know what crunch time is or like the crunch and it's when a game is supposed to release on a certain date like cyberpunk but the team is behind schedule and when the game's behind schedule pretty much everyone has to work overtime and you'd think this is like uncommon in the industry but it's not. It's actually quite common. Long story short since a lot of people are on salary pay which means they get paid you know the same amount all the time the companies will just ask them to work overtime and not pay them anything extra and I'm not one to complain working overtime once in a while if you're behind okay that's fine but if your crunch time is like four months long because you're really behind schedule then like you get to a point where you don't want to work free overtime anymore and since you're on salary you may say well I'm not required to work those hours I just wouldn't do it and that's true some people who are very skilled and like are irreplaceable they will not work overtime if they don't want to sometimes because they won't replace them but me and especially when you're getting into the industry at the beginning you can easily be replaced so I just graduated got a job and had to work overtime because I knew that I could be pretty easily replaced. My last point on this is that Canada specifically has a rule to prevent this from happening to new workers who are working entry level positions and people who are working that don't have anyone underneath them. Like myself, I just graduated and got a job. The law is to stop companies from paying people like really low salaries and then asking them to work a lot of hours. But a lot of video game companies classify their work as IT with the government, meaning they can get people to work a lot of free overtime. But hey, some companies will not ask you to work overtime some companies will honor their workers and pay them overtime all the time and some companies just just won't you know you'll get the short end of the stick and that's how it is and these are the exact questions i suggest you ask and i ask when i go into interviews at new companies and the second thing I wish I knew before getting into the industry is another juicy one, which roles are actually in the industry and also what is the general pay for each of them? Because a lot of people know they want to get into games because they like games, but they don't know what they could actually do. And specifically that point about who makes how much money, because I don't know about you, but I like money. So although there's like hundreds of different roles and positions in the games industry, most of them can be put within one of three categories and not all of them, but, but most of them. And those three categories are design, art, and programming. Design is the easiest to cover things like weapon design, combat design, loot system design, and more. Next, we've got art, character artists, environment artists, FX artists, 2D artists, and more. Finally, we've got the nerds. I mean, programmers. Things like gameplay programmers, AI programmers, network programmers, and again, many more. Let's pretend these three people all have the same skill level. From my experience, designers and artists make about the same, while programmers will make a little bit more, which makes sense in my opinion. And that's not to say a combat designer will never make more than a programmer, it's just more unlikely. And for an example of a good starting wage, in my opinion, in each of these categories, I would say designers and artists should be happy starting around $40,000, and programmers can probably expect to start around $50,000. These are not set in stone. I just happened to start at $42,000. One of my friends as a programmer started at almost $100,000 right away, first job, but I'd say this is a good benchmark for starting out. And remember, different countries and also different cities will pay different. 
So the third thing I wish I knew before getting into the industry was indie companies versus big companies. Independent developers slash indie games or indie studios usually are studios that have around less than 20 people. While the big companies or also known as AAA as they call it have sometimes thousands and thousands of employees in like, you know, different parts of the world, like EA, for example. The part that I wish I knew is like, what are the main differences? And also how do you, if you decide which company you want to work for, how do you go that route? I'd say one of the best questions you could ask yourself when deciding to work for an indie company or smaller company versus a triple A or like big company would be how many hats do you want to wear? Which means like how many different jobs do you actually want to do? I personally just wanted to model things in 3D. So I did not spend a bunch of time learning a bunch of different things. I just practiced modeling so I could get a chance with a bigger company to work on a big game because that's what I wanted to do. And it's because the more skills you have or the more hats you wear, the more valuable you are to a indie company because they have less people. So the more skills you have, the better. And that may mean you're an artist that also knows how to code. A couple other large factors that will help you decide which kind of company is for you. Indie companies usually pay less. Larger companies are more likely to give you benefits like dental and eye care. It's not uncommon for indie games or indie studios to fail, meaning you might be out of a job. And lastly, I'd say that the most passionate game developers that I know all go towards indie games because you actually have an impact on how the game plays and like how good it is in the end of the day. Because when you work for a massive studio and you make like a 3D barrel to sit on the map for Call of Duty, like no one really cares, you know, like it doesn't, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so if you want to work for the big companies or triple A companies, I suggest you to specialize in your craft. But if you want to work on an indie game, then go ahead and learn as many skills as you can. So the fourth thing I wish I knew before getting into games would be how to actually get that first job and break into the industry. It's like starting most things, the beginning is the hardest part because once you have one job on your resume, it's a lot easier for you to get more jobs. But if you haven't worked anywhere before, then you know, these companies have to take a risk on you pretty much. My two specific pieces of advice on this point are one, your network, and two, I would say almost everyone in the games industry has a portfolio of some kind, whether you're an artist, designer, or programmer, because when you apply for companies, you need something to show. Them. And of course, especially for those who haven't worked anywhere because you don't have any, you know, work to show or games to show that you worked on. So having a portfolio is like essential. And the second most crucial part of breaking into the industry is that your network is your net worth. I got my first job in the industry when one of my connections, one of my friends from school, someone reached out to them and say, Hey, do you want to apply for this job? We've got an opening. He said no. And he recommended me instead. They asked me to come for an interview. And when I got there, I pretty much got offered the job because they happened to look at my portfolio on my website. And they were actually planning to give me an art test to do, but they said that I can pretty much do what they want me to. So just by having those connections and also having a portfolio, that process got simplified like super fast and I got hired pretty easily. Guys, number five, last but not least, is becoming successful in this industry is a grind. And by successful, I mean maybe getting to 100K a year. It will be a long climb to get there. And I know that's the case for many industries, but I personally feel that you have to put more work and more time into this industry to make as much as you would in another industry. Like we mentioned before, a portfolio is very important because it shows these new companies that you're applying to or these new positions you're trying to get to, it shows them what you can do. And if you wanna keep moving up, you always have to update your portfolio. And you may think, well, what's the problem with that? But creating a portfolio piece is not just like you spend an afternoon on it because you will not really get anywhere. It takes a long time to create stuff art wise, programming wise, even design wise. Projects and portfolio pieces take weeks or months. Plus when you're working for a company, a lot of the time you don't own what you've just created for them. So you can't really show it off to the public or put it up on your portfolio, which is exactly why I don't have a bunch of art that I can share with you guys in this video because I don't technically own it. And your boy is not trying to get sued. And this means many people work their day job like eight hours, 10 hours, whatever it is, and then come home and work another five hours on their portfolio pieces. I know many people who do that. It's a total grind. It's an everyday cycle and you know, people do it because they want to keep moving up. And that's what you have to do in every industry. Again, I'm aware of that. You got to put in the extra time if you want to move, you know, faster than others and get to new heights. But the amount of work that goes into those portfolio pieces is so immense that I don't know if it's actually worth the potential at the end of the day. One of the only things that I like about the idea of having a nine to five job is that when it hits five o'clock, you can stop worrying about what was happening at work and you can go home and 
not work because you're not working anymore. But after working in the game industry, it's hard to do that because if I don't work on my portfolio stuff on the side, I'm not going to move up. You have to work more than just being great at your job. You have to do more than that. So if you got to the end of this video, consider leaving it a like and subscribing below. Those were the top five things that I wish I knew before getting into the industry. Hopefully those helped you guys out a little bit. And if you do have any questions, like I said, you can follow and DM me on Instagram at the Adam J Bell. And I will see you guys next week.